Vancouver Hockey Show back once again. Andrew Wadden, producer Aaron here with you as the dust has now settled here in Vancouver, Aaron, as the Canucks are moving on, heading off to play against the Edmonton Oilers in round two, which gets going tomorrow as we record this here on Tuesday morning. How did you feel about the the Pred series? I I don't think we need to do like a full rewind. We can look back at some of the bigger stories. So maybe hit rewind there. There we go. Yeah. But what did you feel or how did you feel about the series? Because as a whole, as you know, with this Vancouver Canucks team, like they're, they can score goals. Let, let, let me just claim a small victory from last episode, because I think you doubted me a little bit, but <laughs> she loves, she loves right call in net. I mean, man, that guy was on fire. I, I don't know if I doubted you, but I was surprised. I, I was surprised. I'm not anymore. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to get into You're that a believer. A You've come to the side uh, well, that the she loves. Yeah. Okay. Let's start there then. It's an incredible story that you, in six games, you had three different goalies, which is, yeah. But it's also sort of, you know, Jim Rutherford's kink, if you will. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's seen it in the past with them, right? Mm-hmm. Carolina Hurricanes, Cam Ward. We've seen it with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Matt Murray. Of course, there were Stanley Cups at the end of those rainbows. We'll see if we get there with Shilovs and the Canucks. But yeah, incredible story. Gets the uh, shutout in game six as the Canucks move on. But what a defensive series. As I talked about, they, they can score goals. We saw that in the regular season. High-powered mm-hmm. offense. But they switched into defensive mode against the Nashville Predators. I mean, just playing to their opponent, really, at that point. Well, because Nashville went full defense. so <laughs> Well, they, as they will, right? That's, yeah. that's their game, right? And the Canucks just went toe for toe with them in that game. And then, of course, goaltending was going to be key as well. You talk about Shelovs and, of course, DeSmith and and Demko, but Saros is, you know, worthy at the other end of the ice as well. But it was the lowest amount of shots on goal in all of the series in the first round. The Canucks and the Preds had the lowest. And it was like this. It was like the second most in NHL history, too. Like yeah, the, I saw some stat going around before Game Six. So I don't know if it really applied afterwards, but it was like, yeah, going into a uh, game was like the lowest amount of shots on goal in a series since like the late nine. Was it either late nineties? It was a long time. I'll put it that way. But in this series, as we all saw, I mean, JT Miller, Brock Besser, full marks. Brock Besser's hat trick. I mean, whoa. Yeah, I uh, mean. Besser with you know four goals in the series, six points. Miller six points as well, five apples for him. But I mean, P.S. Suter, you got to give him some props as well. Oh yeah, gets the series clinching goal. What he? I think he had two goals in the series. Or yeah, he had two goals in the series. That line, Aaron had an expected goals for in the series at seventy percent. Mm-hmm. They were miles better than any other line for the Canucks. They doubled the amount of high danger chances. They had 70% of the scoring chances when they were out there. Like, if it wasn't for, you know, JT Miller, Brock Besser, PS, I, I don't know where the Canucks would have been in that series. So, full marks to them. But, of course, we've talked about Elias Pettersson. We talked about him before Game 6 and before Game 5. I guess, yeah, I think the last time we did a pod was uh, after Game 4. Petey's still MIA. Mm-hmm. Still waiting for Petey to break out. Now, he, yeah, we're going to get there in a second. He did have that nice play on the, on the game, the series clinching goal, right? He made the nice play and, you know, Pac eventually gets to the front of the net and then P.S. Suter buries it. So got to give Petey props there. It's like, oh, hey, look at that. Petey made a play. Oh, nice goal. But no goals in the series, just three assists. And the line of Mikheyev, Petey, and Hoaglander outscored one nothing in the series. Now we did see a bit of a shift. In the lines for what one game there where I think Sam Lafferty played with Hoaglander, mm-hmm. that didn't work out as well. So really interested to see, you know, if Petey can get going here and Petey's line can get going here against the Oilers. But we'll, we'll get to the Oilers in just a second, though, as we just sort of get through here with the Preds. I think one of my last thoughts in this series, and I don't know, maybe if a lot of people, I think he's getting praise, but Nikita Zadorov had a really good series. Oh, yeah. Like a really good series, two goals, three points. So obviously it's not about the counting stats when it comes to, I, I got to steal this from Drancer because of course, you know, Mr. Grammatically correct at all times. Can't call him big Z, big Z. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Plus that nickname was already kind of taken anyway. So I like that big Z props to you, Drancer. Well done. Mm-hmm. Analytics though, for Zadorov across the board, all very positive. I'm wondering this, Aaron. Where is Nikita Zadorov going to land in free agency? Ooh. Because he's up in his stock big time right now. 
And as we've seen, you know, through the last, I, I mean, maybe through maybe hockey history, like people love big defensemen. Well, he had big hits. He had a big yeah. goal in one of the games yeah. too. Like, like I said, two goals in the series. Uh-huh. I think Josh Morrissey is the only defenseman that has more goals in, in, in the first running. But again, where is he going to end up in free agency? Where is the price going to be come free agency? The Canucks keep moving on here and Zadorov becomes a big piece of this. Man, he's going to hit a home run in free agency and it might not be with the Canucks. I know to be ashamed. He's been doing the interview rounds too the last few days on all the media outlets. So like, you know, it's he's a, a likable guy. It's a likable guy. Again. Yeah. He's like, a yeah. very good quote. Very likable giant. Yeah. Yeah. I like how he sort of polices on the ice as well. Mm-hmm. People don't get out of line when big Zed's around, but I ask you this, cause it might come down to this. Heronic or Zadorov? Zadorov. No hesitation there, man. Now Heronic right. has probably priced himself higher than Zadorov as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. just because of the offense that he supplies. But at the same time, too, when you're a team like the Vancouver Canucks, like you've got Quinn Hughes there. you got plenty of offense on your defense Mm -hmm. already, Mm -hmm. just in one guy, right? And, you know, salary cap's going to be a thing in the offseason. It is for every team. The Canucks are going to have their issues with it. I think we, what was it? We charted this earlier in the season. Nine free agents that they have to sign that are available to sign, that is. So I'm very interested to see if they have to make a choice between Zadorov and Hironik. And which one they'll pick. Me, right now, because of where I think Heronic's going to go in terms of his pay scale, probably siding with Big Zed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And like you said, like he's out there policing the ice, right? So you have JT Miller up front orchestrating everybody on face-offs. I mean, Quinn Hughes kind of silently controls everybody. But, oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. You need Zadorov back there to hey. keep everybody in check. So, exactly. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, 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 I'm not... I'm not putting Heronic under the bus here as well. If no, you dig no, into the he, analytics. No, is, I've yeah. said before on this podcast, he is a great pair yeah. for Hughes. Oh yeah. No. And if you dig into the analytics, just in, in the series, like Heronic and Hughes were like top of the list when it comes to Corsi four percentage, like these, these, they were controlling play out there. But again, I'm just going back to the fact that Heronic has probably put himself into a price echelon that Zadorov isn't going to hit. However, though, is there going to be a team out there that perhaps you know, overpays for Nikita. Zdorov. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll get to that. Let's, let's remain in the playoff, let's, shall we? Let's come back to the moment. Let's live in the moment right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, turn the page then. Second round, baby. First time in, let's, can we just not talk about the bubble anymore? Can just, just, because we always the have to. The bubble didn't happen. Like, that's, yeah. That's a, we always have to go, well, oh, there was, the, no, let, let's just forget no, that's, about it. No, that's let's, fantasy mode when you're it, on your game, you know. Exactly. Game like, let's just, yeah. let's just wipe that from our mind because it wasn't, real so to speak so the first time since 2011 that the canucks have moved on to the second round facing off against the oilers i i I don't think we said it on the pod or questioned it on the pod but i definitely questioned it to you i can't remember the oilers and the canucks playing in the playoffs this is this will be the third time but it hasn't been since the 90s and the canucks have not won in a series against the the oilers yet so but in the 80s 90s oilers it's like one of the greatest you know nhl teams of all time so here we are against the still powerful Edmonton Oilers with, yeah, once again, the best player on the planet on their team. Now there's a bunch of keys to the series. We put up some videos on our socials yesterday, just, you know, pointing this out, really got to stay out of the box. Yes. It's very obvious against the Oilers. They thrive on the power play. 45% against the Kings. Nine for 20, Aaron. Nine of McDavid's 12 points in the series. 12 points in five games. Just ridiculous. We're on the power play. Now, PK, though, is working for the Oilers as well right now. They went perfect against the Kings, 12 for 12. Now, they were mid, you know, tier team in the, in the regular season when it came to the PK, just over or just under 80% and just a touch above the Canucks, like literally like 0.4% above the Canucks. But right now, clearly something's clicking for them. And I'd like to think that the oil or the Canucks power play is different than the Kings, mm-hmm. but we'll see. It's going to be a big key to this series though, is staying out of the box against the Oilers. And then also when you do get your opportunities as the Canucks to try to, you know, take advantage and sort of break that perfect record that the, the Oilers have right now on the PK. As now, mentioned, before, okay. yeah, b- before we move on, I just got to give a quick, like bit of respect because I was down in the States. So I got the ESPN feed for some of the, Kings and Oilers games while I was down there. And I just got to say the ESPN broadcast 
love it. And the studio was Steve Levy in the in the main chair, PK Subban and Ray Ferraro. And that was an amazing intermission. But and then AJ Malesko on the analyst call as well in the game was fantastic. But PK said in one of the intermissions, Mick David has about three more gears and he hasn't even hit them yet. <laughs> yeah. Well so look yeah. out, right? Exactly. I do love the ESPN broadcast. I love the TNT broadcast. I think I've mentioned it as well before. It's just so much better than what we offer in Canada. It is. And Sportsnet just pales in comparison. I like TSN's hockey coverage. I don't know how many Canuck fans actually watch TSN's hockey coverage because they don't have the Canucks, obviously. But when they do do NHL games, I believe they have Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg. Do they have Ottawa? They might have Ottawa as well. Yeah, yeah, they have Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, because Noodles does the uh, color in those games. They're, they're, they're way better than Sportsnet. But I have been thoroughly impressed with what ESPN has done and what TNT. TNT has basically like taken the model that is their inside the NBA mm -hmm. and just put it into the, into the NHL. Like they've got the personalities as much as, you know, Paul Bizonette might say things that, you know, offend people. I have to give him props that on the TNT broadcast, like he's good. Like, and he's, you know, there's just, it's to me, it's a good product. I think they've done a very good job with it. And I think it's much better than the sports net product. Yep. I'll make a bold prediction right here because of the con consolidation of media Rogers announcing this week that they're going to have some of their hockey games on yeah. Amazon prime. Yeah. I think we might see a sell of TSN soon where it's sold to ESPN. And then we have ESPN North America with the TSN properties being like the Canadian Bureau for ESPN. That's my bold, bold prediction. And that would be great for the consumer here in Canada to have the plethora of ESPN's broadcasts to hopefully expand more Canadian sports as well. Yeah, well, um, because, we'll see where media yeah. is going right now because it doesn't feel like Bell or Rogers is all that interested in staying in the game. Can we, can, can we get back to the... the but yeah, but let's get back Canucks, to hockey. Though? There we go. That was, that was a little tangent. There we go. Taking us for a trip around the block. Canucks need scoring in this series. They're not going to be able to, you know, play the same way they did against the, the Preds. They, like, they're going to have to... They're going to have to score some more goals because the Oilers are going to score. They are. And I know the Canucks can shift into that defensive mode. Don't get me wrong. But right now, with the way the Oilers have been playing and the season series stuff just gets thrown out the window. You know that. I know that. The listener knows that. Like what the first two games of the season, this is a completely different team for the Oilers right now. I mean, not completely different team, but they play a different way. So, I mean, they got smoked by the Sharks. <laughs> yeah, the four nothing <laughs> season series just doesn't apply. At least I think I think the, the slate's been cleaned at this point. Although there is something to take away about the the last time these two met, which was what like game eighty one or game that 80, something the like that for the thirteenth of April. Yeah. A yeah. three, one win. Yeah. yeah. So like that game sort of gives us a good, but at the same time too, like everything ratchets up here in the playoffs as well. So but as Casey PK Smith was, was suggesting McDavid's got three more gears. So yeah. Like. Well, Casey DeSmith was really good in, in that series as well. But like I said, before I get to the goaltending, I just, you know, the lowest amount of goals by a team that moved on was the Canucks in the first round. They only scored 13 goals. Right. We saw Joshua. He had that what good game where he had two goals. Garland, I'd like to see more out of. We talked about Hoaglander. We talked about Petey. Mikheyev, though, my friend. Yep. The guy has one goal in his last 55 games, Aaron. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that Vasily Pod Colson couldn't come in there and perhaps take over for Mikheyev on that line. Yep. I know he's in Abbotsford right now. I get that. They can call him up. You know, I see Abby's in the playoffs themselves, but one goal in 55 games and people are sitting there going like, what's going on with Petey? Well, when you've got one, a guy with one goal in 55 it, games, that's what's going on with Petey right now. He has somebody that can't put the puck in the net. It's ridiculous. Will do you keep doing this? And again, that comes back to the, to the series too, because this matchup game is going to be an absolute nightmare. Yes. Like, and that's why one of the big reasons why you know, spreading the Canucks down the middle with Miller, Patterson, Lindholm is so key, especially come, you know, postseason. I know I'm sure and Lindholm had some you know, great goal in the in the first round as well. Mm -hmm. But I think right now what a lot of people would really like to see from Lindholm is that defensive side of his game as well. He had two goals in the series, excuse me. But, you know, that 
matchup game against the Oilers is going to be very tricky because those two f- top lines of the Oilers, they're powerful. And that yeah, we were talking line, about Big David, but Dry Sidle, Nugent Hopkins, and then like Hyman, they had they had great times in in the last round, didn't they? So, but the like, third line of McLeod, Perry, and Holloway, like Holloway's been good as well, and he's just a mm-hmm. youngster. So it's going to be a bit of a, a nightmare for them. And just going back to Petey's line is like, where are they? What matchup are they going to get? And are they going to be able to win that matchup? Right now, I'm questioning it with the way that you know the three of them are going. But again, going back to Mikheyev, one goal in 55 games. They couldn't even have like just one go off his ass or something. Now the goaltending. Now I know I was surprised when you thought that Shilas would go in game five. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised anymore though. Like put it this way. If Shilas gets game one, which I think he's going to, that doesn't, I, I think it's the right decision. But also you've pointed out before, he has the right attitude, right? Oh, My yeah. time to shine. Well, it's almost like, I, I know that he knows, like, I know that he understands the moment, but at the same time too, it's, He's kind of oblivious to it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like just, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Let's a little na- it. it's naivety like, never hurt. A little naivety never hurt. Well, le- yeah, exactly. Kind of like his world championship run with Latvia. Mm-hmm. Like just ride that wave, right? No pressure right now. But I think Shilovs gets the net and, and I think it's the right decision. I think that Rick Tockett right now, and of course, with the help of Ian Clark and Ian Clark, I mean, literally makes the decision like. You know, talk, it's talked about it at the end of the day. It's my decision, but he leans so heavily on Ian Clark. I, I think they, I think they feel that she is their best chance to win. I don't think they doubt Casey the Smith, no. but I think that if they needed to steal a game off a goalie's back, that she gives them the best opportunity to do that. Well, because the Smith was dressed last game. So he was on the bench. Oh yeah. No, but, he's right. Like, oh yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's available. Yeah. It's not Tilapolo or whatever. They're Tipapolo, the. Big kid that's down in Abbotsford right now. No, he's yeah. It's 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 definitely to Smith as the backup. But again, like I said, it just feels to me like the Canucks think that she lost is their best answer. And at this point, I, I don't disagree. Love the way the kids played. Love his demeanor right now. Like I said, he's just riding that wave. And man, that smile when he like whipped <laughs> that goal helmet off at the end of Game Six. Man, it's like yeah, yeah you did it, buddy. You did it. All right, let's get to prediction time, Aaron. I predicted the first round right. I said yeah. Canucks in six. Yes. Thought you were going to get it in five. Yeah, I, I mean, it was it was looking very promising, but damn it, we had to go back to Nashville, didn't we? So. <laughs> Vic and Kenny were pissed off on our MXC highlights. So I'm going to give you a chance to lead Ooh, us off me, here. Me first goal, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first, first stab at this. I'm having a really tough time trying to figure this out because... I don't think there is, it's either going to be fully dominant or this is going to be a grinder. And I'm kind of leaning towards the grinder of Canucks and seven. Canucks and seven? Yeah. Well, I'm going to put my mouth where my money is because I already put my money down on this. I said Oilers and six. All right. But my buddy asked me today and he texted me and said, what, what do you think? I said, well, my gut says Oilers in six, but I feel like if the Canucks can lock it down into a defensive battle, they'll win the series. You obviously cannot let the Oilers go off on the power play. Just, you can't. No. So you're going to have to be disciplined big time. They did draw a few good penalties in that last series with Nashville. So if they can, Canucks, you know. Or excuse me, Oilers drew 20 in four games. Mm-hmm. Right? So they have a knack for it. And they'll irritate you as well, right? They've got the ultra pest in Corey Perry out there. You know, the local mm-hmm. product, Evander Kane, he mm-hmm. loves to get in people's face. Oh, he's he likes stirring the pot up yeah. out there. All right. Yeah. And, and I don't think people give the Oilers the credit they, they sort of deserve on, on defense. Like, they've got a solid decor. Like, Matias Ekholm was a fantastic pickup for them. And Evan Bouchard's been a great you know, draft pick, drafted and developed. He's got that, the boom, the, the boosh boom that they love in the power play. Although if you remember though, the last time the Canucks played the Oilers, Evan Bouchard was awful. So that's something to look out for. Cody Cece's really turned heads though. I, ever since what he came out, did he go directly from Toronto? I think he might've had a stop in between, but he's carved himself out a, you know, an NHL sort of career here. Like at one point was seemed like a bubble guy and has been good for the Oilers. So and we know Nurse, we know DeHarnay, Kulak. Like, they got some trees back there as well, right? So 
you know, to think that the Oilers might not be able to hang defensively might be a mistake. But at the same time, too, we do know that the offense drives them. And the real question is, can the Canucks be able to hold that down defensively or go toe to toe for them offensively? We'll have to see. Some people listening to this might go, oh, look at the regular season they're scoring. Like Canucks, again, you got to put the, those the, first three games behind you. They just, was, it's no, a different that, Oilers team now. That was a totally different world back then at yeah. the beginning of the season. So it all gets started on Wednesday. Well, Aaron. hey, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't mention one guy, our favorite guy. We get to, we get to yell at, and hopefully Canucks fans taunt him. Skinner. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So who who wins the goaltending battle? You think? Yeah, right. Shelovs like, versus Skinner. Yeah. Yeah. Or perhaps even I don't know about seeing Demko in this round. I I, I know. I think, I think if things get hairy, we'll probably see him game. Three. I don't know. I don't think we will. Right. Aaron. He, apparently tore something in his knee mm. like i don't know how people are like yeah he's out on the ice but i mean like how do you i mean if, if they're i i don't even know if that report is true right like everything is hush hush right now but i mean you don't want to show those cards at all i i, I mean yeah like i don't know man I, to me i think it's wishful thinking that he'll be back at all in these playoffs but we'll see but hey i'm confident in shelovs i'm confident in smith yeah back up so I think Canuck fans and, would be, I, I think Canuck fans confidently can say that we feel our team can still win without Demko. And if that and is if anything, know, let them rest because if they keep going, we're really going to need Demko down the line. Yeah, right. Like so. I said, though, if it's, yeah, I mean, we have seen him on the ice. So let, okay. Put it this way. Let's cross that bridge when it comes. All right. Mm-hmm. But right now looking at things going into game one, I'm predicting she loves. I'm predicting though Oilers and six, you got Canucks and seven. People listening to this podcast right now are hoping that you are right and I'm wrong. I'm probably thinking that most of the time anyway. All right, Aaron. I'll get going tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. Canucks and Oilers from Vancouver. It's been another edition of the Vancouver Hockey Show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Skinner!